whether you use characters or just store a, you know, a couple of bits or whatever. But then we'll draw a maze. There's our, there's our goal. Say so we start here. And if we take a left-hand rule, when we get to here, we're going to say, okay, we've got a T. So at a T, since it's a left-hand rule, we go left. So the first thing we're going to store is we hit an intersection and we store an L. And then we get to another intersection no. or a turn. We don't you ignore it. And Exactly, and you don't have to, you don't care about this, or do you? In the simplest algorithms, you don't. In the more complex algorithms, you do. So let's just stick with a simple one and say we're going to ignore this. We get to here, and we turn around. So then we U-turn. And the reason you might want to know this is if you were tracking distances, and then you were accelerating and decelerating, so you could go like a rocket in the straights and slow down for the turns. Then you want to know that, but we're not. Let's. Step two. Okay, so we, then we U-turn, and we come back, we hit this T. Turns out it's the same T, but we don't know or care. Then we're going to make a left again. And so the robot, I don't have another color, do I? I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you are a hero. So here's our path so far. And we make another left. And then we make another U-turn. And we make another left. And so what have we done here? We've done, I haven't come up with all of the uh, potential. L U L. I'm just keep I'm just keeping going here, right? Uh, yeah, straight in there. Or yeah, that's my uh, what are you your third? Oh you know, let's now. let's do this. Let's do this. If I start at this point of the maze, it'll be a little more interesting. <laughs> you also don't have a T in there. Not that it was not. All right, we'll do that. So we'll kind of redraw our maze a little bit. Left, left, U turn. So we went left, left, U. Left, U, so left, left, U, left. I'm going to number these or something. One, two, three, two. So losing track. Here's my second U. Here's this left. This U turn. This left. That was, and that was a straight. That's right. Fairly important to know potentially. And you only put an S down when you ignored a right turn, because there's lots of straights. Every exactly. Yeah, okay. So when you ignored, okay. Um, I don't know that we care about that, frankly. Yeah, we do. Do we? In that particular case, that we probably not. But sometimes you would certainly care about it. Well, you need to have it because you may need to reduce to a straight. Exactly. Um, we may not need to log that. So now let's reduce it. Anytime we have an LUL, like here would be one, LUL, that can be replaced by a straight. So then you just go through and say, all right, these guys here get replaced by a straight. And these guys here get replaced by a straight. And Denise has a bazillion colors here. So if we then go um, left, straight, U-turn, straight, we've met the goal. So we've done a partial reduction. So you have to set up the number, you have to think through the number of rules, LUL equals straight. And I haven't necessarily done these in the order. Now you can either run the whole maze and then reduce it at the end, or you can reduce as you go. Um, you know, just get to there and say, oh, and replace that. And then 
anytime I have an, uh, so what do we have now? We've got L, S, U, S, S. I guess we, um, so we've got this U term, which we can eliminate, and that would become a right. So you need to get rid of the L before you put a right in there? So now if you just went, if you went L that's right, R, that's right. so that L, L S U S, with that, those L four? L S, well the, the S drops out. I'm doing it, th it's the wrong order. If you do it, in the, if I do this first, then that'll become a little more clear. We take out this first straight, and we would then keep, you know, keep this guy. I think it is easier to do it in order. S. Our, our red one is L S U L U L S. Well, we can't necessarily take all of this out in one whack, right? I haven't memorized all the rules, but. This, uh, I think this is the next thing we can pull out, right? We can eliminate this. Okay, yeah. Here's our key. Is anytime you find a U, that's your key that you can reduce something. Yeah. That's the there. That's the deal. So this L S U L or this S U L can be replaced. So our, our next rule is straight, straight U L. Is equal to we're eliminating this leg now, right? So we'll get rid of that one. Is equal to a right. So now these guys get replaced with an R. Now you can make up rules like this, but there's also, and I've, it's been a while since I've seen it, but there is, uh, and so I don't have it memorized, but there's some folks that add up the angles. It's like, okay, we're going to assign this is 90, and this is 180, and this is negative 90, and you, you do the summing, and every time you hit a 180, you sum these three, and that gives you the, the next rotation. Okay, so what's our next step, guys? May I have one We've extremely got naive question? L, R, U, L, S. Yes, question? Uh, it's going to be extremely naive. What I'm missing here is uh, when you describe the first path, the mapping. I'm sorry, Denise was making noise, I couldn't hear you. I'm when, sorry. <laughs> we just had to tease her, I'm sorry. When you are describing the first path, you practically mark points where you you make a decision and mark points when where you have to uh, reverse. So you have L and U's. Right. Now, you are intentionally ignoring information about points where you have to make choice if you are making choice out of two or three. It occurs to me that uh, it would be much more efficient use of information if you could remember about uh, the choice, if you took choice out of two or out of three. Because if you take choice out of three, then uh, straight you left, reverses to right. Okay. So, yeah, there are other ways to reduce it or correct. I think one uh, 
Can I add one quick thing? Um, we are uh, initially tackling the maze with saying we're going to go left everywhere. Yes. It, okay. Right. So you, okay. I just want to so we go left everywhere. <laughs> but when you are going there, you I'll see you you see modality of each uh, each node uh, on each crossing. You see on each crossing on each place where you have to make choice. You know if you are making choice out of two or out of three. If that was choice out of two, first reduction uh, removes it. There is no any recursion to that. There is no more options. If it was choice uh, one yes. out of three, the first reduction still gives that node an option to do the second reduction. Right. However, um, and, and I think your point is pretty easy when you're dealing with, you know, are, are you are you doing recursion or not? You know, how many times are you passing through this? Um, so we've gone through this reduction once. And we basically pass through. You do a check through your array. Are there any U's in the array? If yes, do a find it. Do a reduction. Go through. We're looking for U's again. Find it. Do a reduction and so on. However, you can also reduce on the fly, because I can get to this point and reduce. So there's no, re there's no recursion. And I can get to this point and reduce. Because I, I know enough now I can reduce. So you can reduce on the fly. You can reduce your, and reduce the amount of memory required and not doing any recursion. And I would say, you're probably correct that if you're going to wait until the end, and do it all in one hit, it might be valuable to know that. I haven't thought through the algorithms, but if you're doing it on the fly, it doesn't matter. And you're still going to wind up with the same maze, of res the same reduction at the end. I think there's a, um, so, your so your latest reduction should also do the maze, which I don't see that it will. If you take a left, a right, and then a U-turn, and then a left, it, that's your, um, this one here? I, I think there's an order of, I mean, I, I don't know anything about maze, so left. I'm just guessing. Right, U-turn, left, straight. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. So we have another U-turn we can eliminate, and we've got an R-U-L to get rid of. Oh man, this is turning out better than I realized because I didn't actually prepare. We actually have three different rules come up here out of this. Um, so a a right U-turn left. If we're going to eliminate this thing here, becomes a U. So now we have left U-S and. We already have a rule for left US, it comes right, and we've solved our maze. This will sound a little overkill, but it seems to me if you wanted to retain the record of where you've been, but still be able to block directions, you could use a linked list instead of just a pure array to link it and then just have a flag that states, okay, dead end or something like that in the link structure so that you can mark the different directions you can go as valuable or not. If, if you're really going to nasty, you could, yeah, you can make a two-dimensional link, link list where every node has a straight, a left, a right, mm -hmm. and a U-turn node, or you know, link off of that node and basically make a map that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, if that would be the next, the next level because in this. Our rules state that we start on the outside edge uh, and that we end on an outside edge. But if we were in a maze competition where the, the starting or ending point were not on an outside edge, then left hand, right hand rule fails. So in that case, you would want to actually have a two dimensional unknown, because you don't know how big the maze is, a two dimensional list that would say, oh, well, we've got a cross here, and we've got one of these here, and we've got one of these here. 
assuming the rules provided that these were actually on a grid, which our rules do, um, and then. And if it was a linked list, it might even be easy, easier when you're building the map to merge both the left hand try and the right hand try. Sure. Do we have yeah, any questions space. in the back? I don't want to be the one. Go for it. You, but you are this guy. This, this we one is going to be more naive. You, you are discussing linked list or array. When I saw this, I was thinking two bits per per decision point and shifting. Right. Yeah. And masking, and it's not fast. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can we do a sample of that on the board? Can you expand upon that? So two two bits per two bits per node per node. Okay, and then and then shifting. So are you uh, would you would you uh, rather than saving everything uh, all the history and memory, is your thought that you would just keep shifting it and possibly even releasing things that were old so old that they no longer are relevant as you're reducing? Is that what you're? Yeah, well, when I'm sorry, I don't Kirk. Know. Yeah, it's Kirk. okay. I'm Peter. Hi. Uh, when Kirk mentioned that uh, you are optimizing as you go, so in in the moment you see that you have uh, so U. L U L, you you can replace it with S. See. That tells me you are changing the. You are always uh, changing the tail of the remembered row. So, 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 so your thought so is to overwrite and delete, shift out, rather well, than rather than continue. The, the natural, the natural structure to do that would be stack. I see. Yeah. Because you are popping yeah. in, and you you just pull three of them and pop one instead. I see. L U R. But uh, when you want really to save the memory, you can simulate stack just by by the uh, chain of reads. Okay. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. So yeah, so shift, you, you shift one direction six bits, and then shift. I would, yeah, I would make sense now. When you directions. initially said shift, I was thinking of a serial data stream, and then in a, as a stack, it's easier for me to visualize. It makes a lot more sense. So we're popping and pulling off the stack, and we can maintain, we can reduce that stack from a big stack down to a very quickly, and just get rid of that memory very quickly, and just become. Yeah, yeah you are. I did not express myself. Uh, I was joining two things. Uh, one thing is a stack. The second is the interpretation of a stack where one item of the stack is not byte, but it's just two bit. I see. Yeah. I do not know how much memory we have and we, if we really need to go that time. Yeah. It, it, depend, it depends on which chip you're using. Some, but most of the modern yeah. chips have you know 2K of RAM. So. Or, or you know, one one k yeah. or more. And memory is not usually any kind of problem. Even processing speed at the at the speed we're doing here, that's not even a problem. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're trying to do vision or something. What what is the Kirk from your experience? What's the maximum number? Of, I mean, reduction is it really just four layers always? Or um, is it I don't know that I have. I don't think I've done all the rules. Approach. It's sort of a one shot. I mean, you're you're creating the stack, reducing the stack. And the substitution occurs in, in essence, two functions. I mean, uh, right. essentially two functions. Um, I, I symbolized it differently. I did the, and my reduction code is not done. Actually, my reduction code is done, but I, I can't follow a line well enough to actually use it. Use it. Um, so I did the the mathematical where I'm where I'm assigning each of these a number, and then you just go through and. Anytime you see a 180, and you, you, you add them, and so that does the that does all of your rules, just mathematically. So I don't I don't know how many of these rules there are because I didn't do my code this way. <laughs> I, I like the idea of reducing it all to two to a couple of bit, uh, basically every node to right. the least number of bits possible, and then going through and do a substitute and reduce. Yeah. Trying to do it in two functions. And, and the question, sir, to a degree becomes, is it worth it? You know, do you care? Because if you've got enough RAM. It really, it all, yeah. But if yeah. you're using a single stack, how do you think multiple tasks work for you? Okay. 
Okay. Well, um, okay. <laughs> okay. So repeat your question, Len. If you're using a single stack and you're making up to three passes in the competition, how do you merge everything in a single stack? Because there might be an optimal way. There's obviously going to be an optimal way for the left hand rule. There's going to be an optimal way for the right hand rule. I'm not. But there may even be a more optimal way merging the two together. That's correct. And so if you're using a stack system <coughs> I don't, that only keeps one thread, how do you merge I don't, two passes to make your best third pass? Right, okay. Answer to that is, I don't think that this algorithm will do that. Okay. Okay. There's, there are other algorithms to do this. This is one way of doing it. But left hand, right hand, and then doing a merge, you have to, you have to know more about the maze to do that. Um, I'm just using it. two arrays. I'm doing a left-hand array and a right-hand array, and you know, and then I go and see at what point, you know, which one's got the most elements in it, and that's the path. You know, the one with the least elements is the path I take when I reduce. But the, but to answer your question or go a little further, who was it that mentioned the idea of having a list where you say, I know what every node is, yeah, and now I can pick a node. Because if you have, and this is a bad example of a maze, but let's suppose that you had a section where um, you might have a, a longer path to the, um, to the goal, and then you might have a shorter path with more terms in it, you could analyze all your nodes, analyze the number of straights, figure out your velocities, calculate times, and say, this way is shorter, this way is faster. Because shortest is not always fastest. The, there is also the, the flood algorithm. You guys familiar with the flood algorithm? No. No. Okay. Shall I erase this all this other stuff? Oh, let me make sure I got the last clear shot here. All right. So uh, is there anything in the rules? Um, if you had your encoders and you knew distance and all the way to the end, you can just make a straight shot for there it? There is. You can't do that? Yeah, you can do that. If you can. You'll be disqualified, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the rules do state that we pre that you will the robot will travel as if there were walls. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So unless you have a hopping I'm robot. I'm surprised uh, Ching wasn't here. That's the only competition he ever really does. Yeah. It's the maze. Um, robot the may not cut from, from one, one path to another. Right Robots so must get the sequence very first down there. Uh, I've never even looked at the rules because I don't print them. Yeah, the rules always come up. Yeah, but all, all of them, anybody's trying to do all of them ultimately reduce to left hand or right. I mean, I mean, that's kind of the idea. You run one turning left all the time, you run the other one turning right all the time. I think all these different methods still want to examine the overall, you know, which is the best path. So, in essence, even if we were to view this as just a mappings problem where we're maybe not constrained by memory like we were discussing, or maybe if we can remember every node all the time, regardless of how big the maze is, still the reduction algorithm, the reduction fu the function, even if we're mapping, there's still going to be a reduction process. There's, there's no other way, there's no other logic in this. Is there any other logic, I guess? Is okay, that flood flooding algorithm. Okay. And you guys are going to have to excuse me because it's been a long time since I studied this and I didn't get a chance to re review it last night. Um, so let's draw a maze that uh, and we're going to have a more generic maze with a goal in, in the middle, which our rules prohibit, but let's just, for flooding algorithm, we're going to do that. Um, so, and here's our start point. Um, so, the analogy is, if I have a maze, and we have a line maze, but let's just suppose that this were bounded by walls, right? And I take a fire hose, and I put the fire hose right here, 
the water is going to, you know, flow outwards evenly. So as I'm filling this up with water, you know, this is zero. Kind of do negative depths here. This guy is one. So as we're, you know, that's where the, the first place the water gets to. Water gets to the second, gets to these, second, gets to here, third. That's the two there. No, that's the two. No, that's the second. Thank you. Yes. Two, three. Did I do it right so far? Four, five, six, seven, five. So now we have determined a path. Well, we know that this one's a dead end. Now I'm trying to remember now how we reduce from that. How we reduce from this. How do you know it's a dead end? Well, we see dry, dry branches. Pardon? This is a tree. Yes. A tree. That's tree right. Path, sure. You remove dry branches. Right. Yeah. That's right. So how you found this is we drive from here to here. We make a left. Okay, I found a node. That's a one. I found a node. That's a two. I have a, I have a 2D array of memory. So in my memory, and we don't know where this is. We don't know where this corner is. So we're going to have to have a, basically a big enough memory to accom accommodate any case. So we're going to have to start in the middle of our memory and have this two-dimensional array. And in this array cell here, we put a one. In this array cell, we put a two, because we turned left and we followed that. We found the node, and we put a two. We turned around, and we put a three. And we flagged this three as a dead end. And so that's how we can start reducing that. So this is, you're assigning both a number and what is available as far as paths. Okay, now it's coming back to me. It's been so long since I've studied this. When I get to one, I look around. And this is, I think, where Peter was going, right? No. When I get to one, I know that I have, I have four directions I can go. When I get to this one, I know that I can go this way or this way. When I get to this one, I only have one direction I can go. So I'm, de I'm defining the open, if these were walls, these are the openings in the wall. I have a thought. Um, if I was looking at it, I would think of it like a tree, and I'm actually trying to find the next number. So from one, I'm going to find all my locations for two, then um, go up to find three, four to four, and then just try to follow the path with the, you know, to right. the numbers. But you do, you do need to keep track of which sides of the box are open. Then he sees on the right track, this is what I meant. Uh, if, if you imagine the, what we just got with, with the numbering, the distance of the node, the degrees of the node from the root as a chart, you know that your, uh, your final place is on one branch. That's right. You pick that point, and you see it has degree of five. So you know your whole route needs to pass five steps, five. Now, out of the final place, which, Go has, which has a degree five, you see only one node that has degree four. That's right. From that point, you see only one that, and, and you. And now, and now, now my memory is coming back to me. You're absolutely right. So you, you solve the maze backwards once you've done this. Right, so we know that this is our goal, we get to four, then we find the nearest three, which is here. And then we find the nearest two, and we can randomly pick. Or if we were clever, we would say, oh, well, we can reduce the number of turns by picking this two, it's the straight line, instead of the turn. And then the straight line one. So by picking these two paths, are the same length, 
but this one is more likely to be fast. Thank you for reminding me of that. It's been, like I said, it's been a long time since I've studied this algorithm. You're most welcome. Thank, thank you for reminding me that those are cyclic trees, so yeah. I think it's not that simple, so I yeah. have a so when you when you originally said Peter try to remove the dry branches, you meant backwards in the to yes. you would always right. do that yes. backwards. Yeah, okay, that yeah that's the key is, is solving backwards. That's the part when you when you said dry branches, I was trying to figure it out. It didn't make sense going forward, but going backwards, it makes perfect sense. It's just intuitively a natural thing to do. Okay. Right. All right, that makes sense. So but in this, the first step you need to do is map the whole field. That is correct. So you have to go through the whole field. And as you're mapping the whole field, in order to assign all these numbers, this is why you have to assign what all these directions are. And remember those. At the end, to reduce the maze, you don't care. What, you, know, you don't care that this has which directions are available here. All you care about is I'm going from 1 to 2, from this node to this node. But in order to assign the numbers, you have to go through and say, oh, well, I've got four openings here. and one opening here, and you know I've got two openings here, two openings here, three openings here, and that you have to know that to be able to assign the numbers. Yeah, but if you're doing, is this a situation where you do the left hand first run, right hand the other run? How do you match up the numbers? Because you don't know, because you may be coming from a different direction that you've been to that node already, unless you're really using good yeah, you, counting you, you have to keep. You don't. Because you might loop back to somewhere you've been already and not know you've already recorded that note. You're doing, you do need to track distance. You're, you're absolutely you right, Glenn. When you array up there, when you're marking on your 2D array, you do the one run. Okay. Now you use the same array, do your, your other run with the other rule, and if you end up with numbers that are smaller, you mark the smaller ones. You use the smaller numbers. You basically overlaid your two on top of it then you do your reduction. But how do you know you're actually back? You may have looped back through a different distance That's getting true. there. So how do but, you know what you know how you want? But you know how many cells you're marking along the way. Right. Yeah, you have, you have to assign, you know, if this is, you know, cell zero, zero, and, you know, we're doing, you know, pluses here and minuses here and minuses here and pluses okay. here, or however you want to assign your array values. Array indices. So you are trying to make distance a factor. You are definitely yeah, keeping track of distance yeah. because you have to know. Um, you know, in this maze it doesn't matter, but you know, if there were a gap here, let's just modify this maze real quickly. From the five to six, that has to be a two-cell distance because it's good. You know. Right. You have to know that because if you were to be own. Thank you. This maze actually doesn't account for that. We'll just keep that. Keep it like that. So from this node here, this 5, to this 6, to this 7, this is a distance of 2. So you need to know that this has two openings and call that a node by keeping track of the distance right. that your robot moves. Thank you for... So your 6 would be a 7, and your 7 would be an 8. Yes, you're correct. Thank you, John. Obviously, it makes no difference in the reduction, but it would because if if there were a, if you had this path, you know, inserted in here, like this. Let's just redraw this maze real quick, and we can find an error that Don's suggestion would fix. If we put the goal here and did this. This is why you need to keep track of your openings. Because if I have three, four, five, six, six, no, five, seven, five, five, five yep, six. seven, five, six. And this is also why you solve it in reverse. Because if I were to solve it one, two, three, four, five, I might think, oh, well, I can go here. And I can't. Well, Which you're assuming solve it in reverse. you're assuming that the maze has turns and straights at e even units. That it, this and that it is does. part of the requirement of okay. the flooding algorithm. It's yes. on a ten inch. This ten algorithm requires okay. an even grid. 
Okay. I don't think we have an even grid, do we? We, we have an even grid. 10 inch center. We do. So it's 10 ah, inch center. Very good. Which I've learned the hard way. It's good. Because my robot's built on a 12 inch center. <laughs> 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 All right, so here's an idea. It's really great. And um, well, if we take a 10 minute um, break, but before we do that, there are some great ideas up here. Is there an even peer? Do you want to come up and do a different algorithm or show a different way? 